Fill the group. We're having fun. It's a Wednesday. You know what day it is? Wednesday? It's hook day! Woohoo! Here we are, Nathan. Huzzah. Hello and welcome to another episode of TFL Now Live. It's Wednesday. We're listening to some wonderful music. Some and good funk. We're glad to have you all with us uh, because we have this beginnings of a three-part show today, Nathan. We're going today, tomorrow, and Friday. And Friday. The next three days we're going to be talking about basically what's coming in 2019, what's going to be leaving in 2019, and what's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, we got a lot of cars to cover. So three days worth. So we're going to try to push through this. And, uh, yeah, wish us luck. Yeah, today we're going to cover, we're going to do alphabetically by mm -hmm. manufacturer. So today we're going to go A through, like, F or something like that. And then tomorrow will be F through M. And then it'll be M through V because the last alphabetical car maker is Volkswagen. Uh, but, yeah, so like I said, we're talking about what's new, the big changes, the new models, uh, things of the sort. What's dead? What cars are leaving? What are no longer with us? And, of course, you know, year to year a lot of manufacturers make little tweaks. Minor changes, things like that. Now, Car and Driver actually went and put out this list, and we are going off of their script. So we are going to be using a lot of the stuff they came up with. So thank you, Car and Driver. And before we get into the list, we have to plug Welcome to the Hood. Uh, it's a way that you guys can show us support uh, by using uh, YouTube's Super Chat function. So uh, we have a number of different levels of support that you can give us, uh, and we like to try and give back to you at the same time. So right. for $5, uh, you get a bell ring, and we write your name on the hood. We give you a welcome to the hood, and we'll answer a question if you put it in the comment right there. Uh, $10, you get a TFL truck sticker, bumper sticker. I'm sorry, did you get that? You don't get that too? <laughs> uh, keeping the bell over here. <laughs> you can ring the bell. Uh, $10, uh, you get a patch. We have TFL car and TFL truck patches. I also lost that hat. Those are really cool. Those are fun. I had those made, uh, so... And then, uh, what's the last one? $50, we have hats. So, uh, 50 bucks, we'll send you a hat. We will sign it if you want. If not, we won't sign it. Uh, and so, if you do donate, please just send us an email to info at tflcar.com. Let us know your address so we can uh, show you some love right back. But uh, is it time to get in the list? Let's get on the list. Let's, let's get right to it. Let's There's do a lot. It. Acura is the first automaker, alphabetically speaking, uh, and you go ahead. That's right. The RDX is one of the first ones on the list. An awesome, awesome vehicle that we had an opportunity not only to drive, but to take up Pikes Peak. And we had the A spec model that we were able to drive. It has a new 10 speed automatic transmission. It is one of the biggest redesigns of the past decade. Uh, we truly like it. And other vehicles that have recently been updated the MDX, which also gets an A spec package. Wheels, side sills, interior accents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The NSX, which gets minor trim changes, but you may have noticed, by the way, that at the Pebble Beach Concorso, they actually had a new color that came out—this bizarre, like orangish yellow color, yep. which like melts the eyeballs. It's loud. Uh, yeah, it was it's really loud. loud. And then the ILX, which it gets a facelift, or should be getting a facelift. Um, now we only have the old, older model that we're able to show you, but. Um, that has the older styling. No changes come to the TLX or the RLX. And no models are leaving Acura's lineup. So no. Uh, what of these are, are you most excited for? Well, I really liked the RDX, and with the exception of the fact that they had the push-button gearbox. I can't stand yeah, that. Yeah, those are a little nice. I was really hoping to get my hands on the newest uh, NSX. I got to drive one in the snow. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. The ILX was impressive. I'm hoping that they're able to give it a little bit more power cool. in the there future. Is. Look at that. That's a color. Yeah, all righty. How about that? And I like the fact that Acura is being a little bit more aggressive with their colors and whatnot. So, yeah, excited about that. Let's move on, though, to what is what I consider one of the most exciting brands that's currently in North America. It's hot right now, I think. I think so, too. And that's Alfa Romeo. Mm -hmm. Take it. Uh, so the Stelvio is going to get some updates. There's going to be a rear-wheel drive version available of the Sport Model TI. Uh, the, the TI trim and the Quadrifoglio remain all-wheel drive only. But yep. I believe what's cool about the rear-wheel drive version, A, is that you can get a rear-wheel drive crossover. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Especially in Alpha. But B, it'll be a little bit cheaper uh, than... Oh, 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 do the thing. Do the thing. Oh. Hello, 14. John Scott sent us 14.99. John, Welcome thank you. Hood, John, I will be writing your name. Okay. Well, while you write the name, I'll continue. Now, um, what's going away? 
the 4C Coupe. <laughs> okay, um, guys, the 4C is a lot of fun. We did get a chance to drive more than one of them. Unfortunately, the coupe is nearly impossible to remove yourself from if you're over six feet tall. <laughs> so I really, it's, it's really hard to get. Oh, another, oh, what we, oh, okay. 49 John, Thank you. holy moly. John, you're awesome, thank you. I was going to write 14 but now it's going to have to be, what, 16 just call it 65. Fortunately, the 4C Spider will be staying behind, and there's no changes to the Julia. So let's move on. As Are you still doing more, or are you going to want to go to Aston Martin? Uh, what do you, well, let's talk about Alpha for a brief moment. Brief moment. Brief, brief um, moment. So the 4C Coupe is gone, but the 4C Spider is staying. The 4C right. Spider is right. a lot easier to get in and out of, and frankly speaking, I don't see a big problem with that. The 4C just wasn't that popular. But if you want a budget Ferrari... Dude, that's as close as you're going to get. Here's my question about Alfa Romeo. Is the Giulia the best sports sedan you can buy right now? You mean the Quadrifoglio version? Right, sure. Yeah, 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 without a doubt. It's, think so? Oh, with one exception. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say it. They need a manual transmission. I know you guys for some reason just think, you know what, you Americans and your manual transmissions, you don't like them, you don't get them. Look, not many people are buying the car anyway, so maybe bring a few over here just yeah. as a goodwill gesture, yeah, yeah. and maybe we'll buy a couple of those. Show us some love. Yeah. Show us a little bit of love, because it would be awesome with a proper six-speed. Let's move on, though, because uh, we've got a lot to cover. Yeah, time to move from Italy to England with Aston Martin. So, uh, the first up is the DBS Superleggera, yep. which is an Italian word. <laughs> uh, it's going to replace the Vanquish S, and it'll have a 5.2-liter quad-cam twin-turbo V12 with, wait for it, 715 horsepower. Damn! And a whopping price tag of $308,000. Uh, and next, but not least, is the Rapid E, not the repeat, I repeat. The Rapid, Rapid e. e. Yeah. Um, really uh, clever naming there, Aston Martin. Uh, it'll be their first all electric car, uh, and they're only going to make, well, 155 units of it. So, uh, good luck buying one. But it should be interesting to see. Uh, well, also, it's just a clever pun in the name. But Yeah, uh, I, they've know. tried clever puns before. I think it was something to do with a very small car that they built. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah I there's that. more. The Vantage. Check this out. A seven-speed manual by the end of 2019. We were just talking about yeah, that. Yeah, unlike manufacturers who are... Pulling away from mostly it. Mostly going away from <laughs> it. <laughs> so Aston Martin has decided that they're just going to... Toss one in the Vantage. Right? Thank you so much for doing that. Bless you. God bless the queen. Uh, DB11. Uh, the V12 no model will now be called the DB11 AMR mm -hmm. for Aston Martin Racing, uh, distinguishing the V12 from the V8 model. Okay. So the V8 will no longer, will no, it, it will be just the DB11. Here's the Rapide. Uh -huh. Yeah, the 2019. It's a very special edition. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the last naturally aspirated V12 model. Wow. Holy cow. That's terrifying. That's sad. That's really sad. Yeah. Uh, it'll have carbon fiber trim and a special design package, uh, up to 30. Up, it's going to increase up 30 horsepower to 580, mm -hmm. which is a lot. Yeah. But compared to what 700 and whatever it was in the other one. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> 715 in the DBS Superleggera. Yeah, but the last V12. Oof. Well, they're only going to make 210 anyways. So. Oh, okay. Well, you know, there you go. Worldwide um, too. So. And uh, rest in peace. We have to tip our take off our hats. I'm not wearing a hat. Mm. Uh, Vanquish. The Vanquish S is dead. Here, I'm pouring a little something for Vanquish. Pour one out for the homies. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, there you go, Aston Martin. Time to keep moving on because we honestly just have so much to get through. And I promise we'll do some shout outs soon. So if you have questions, please be sure to drop them yeah, in the Yeah, please comments. do. Uh, but let's, get on, let's move on to the big one, Audi. Audi. They got a bunch. Tons. So uh, coming up in 2019 is the Audi Q8, which is their all new flagship uh, crossover, basically. It's going to be like a coupe body style version of the Q7. Yeah, I think the one that I saw at the, I think it was LA Auto Show, they had four seats in it, four giant seats. Yeah that were multi-positionable. So it was basically the same wheelbase, the same vehicle, but a different body and a different interior. Uh, and supposedly they're gonna come out with that, but the rumor has it, that's not on here, is that they're looking at making that possibly a hybrid electric vehicle in the very near future. That is a rumor I recently heard. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Also, I wanna point out, uh, this is kind of a step forward in Audi's design language. Yes, it is. Uh, it's their new flagship, so expect a lot of new Audis to kind of look a little something like that. I think maybe. the grill and the eye, um, the headlights are indicative of what you're going to see in the future. And I don't, uh, I don't hate that. I think it actually looks really nice. I don't hate it either. All right, time to talk about the A6, A7, and A8 because they're all being revised for the 2019 model year. So they'll get new styling, like yeah. we just talked about. Um, there's going to be a 335 horsepower turbocharged. V6 as the base engine with a 48-volt mild hybrid option. 
Uh, and we're actually going to be driving the all-new A8 in October, which is very soon. It's very exciting to hear. Unfortunately, right I'm not going. No. Yeah. Is it Roman? Yeah, probably. Of course it's Roman. Yeah, of course it's Roman. Uh, the RS5 Sportback, uh, which is like a baby A7 look. Yeah, it yeah. kind of looks like the A7. Yeah, little. it kind of looks like a smaller A7. Uh, finally joining the RS5 Coupe, 444 horsepower out of a big old V6 uh, with, you know, look at that. Oh, that green. I really like that paint color. Uh, it's gorgeous. Roman got to drive that a little while back. Uh, there's a review up on TFL Car. Of course, it's all-wheel drive. Mm. Uh, next up is the R8 R... Ooh, 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 sorry. Logan Webb. Logan! $99.99. You guys are doing great. Keep up the amazing work. Two thumbs up. Thank you very much, Logan. And you we got a kick-ass name, point. too. Oh, yeah. Come on. Logan. Logan's awesome. Logan's a great name. <laughs> um, speaking of great things, and I believe Logan... Didn't Logan uh, drive an R8 in a... In a Marvel movie? Yeah, that's right, in uh, uh, The Wolverine. The Wolverine. Yeah, yeah right. there are, there are everywhere. Perfect timing, Logan. You could not have timed that better. Uh, because we're talking about the R8 RWS, which is the rear-wheel drive. Yeah. Unfortunately, no more manual. No, no more manual, and they didn't make a whole lot of them. Uh, so good luck getting your hands on one of those, unless you got a lot of money. Okay, Mike, you have an, uh, one to add to this, which yes. is the... Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Ryan du Dubay. Hey, Ryan. Can you put my doggy, his name is Johnny, and Cash. Oh, Johnny Cash. Oh, that's a good name for doggy. Johnny Cash? His name is Johnny Cash. That's put cool. him on the hood. He's a black lab and a big fan of riding in cars. We'll always make some room for the dog. Without a doubt. Hood. Everybody here is a dog lover, except for, like, Andre. You understand. I'm Russian. Johnny yeah. Cash. Mike, uh, Mike's going to be covering the e-tron because that is actually some pretty big news for Audi. Yeah, and so, that, so the Q8... Uh, they're not calling it the same platform, I don't think, because it's an electric car, but back a couple weeks ago, Audi invited me up to the tippy top of Pikes Peak here in our home state of Colorado, uh, and they slapped me in a Q8 with a German engineer and another automotive journalist, uh, and we basically were just there to see how much charge we could regenerate from the top of Pikes Peak all the way down to the bottom. Now, for those of you who don't know, the e-tron uh, is Audi's new all-electric uh, SUV or crossover. That's it. It's still covered in some prototype camouflage, but that camouflage is, compared to a lot of camouflage, pretty... Uh, it's pretty you, easy to figure out what it looks <laughs> it like. It gives you a good idea what it's going to look like. And it looks a lot like the Q8, honestly. Um, now, I didn't get to drive it, so I can't tell you how it drives, but I can tell you that it was certainly a very comfortable thing to ride in. And what's really cool, you can see right here, it doesn't have traditional mirrors, but instead it has little, uh, little cameras with little screens uh, and you know what's cool about those? Right. Actually, what's not cool about those? Right. We're not going to get them. Didn't think so. Yeah. We're American. Yeah, we're American. Um, um, <laughs> speaking of uh, the e-tron, the A3 yeah. e-tron is going away. Yep. Rest in peace to the A3 e-tron. Yep. And, and the current generation S6. That's dead as well. Mm-hmm. The S7 and the RS7. And S8. And S8? Seriously? And all S, S and RS, RS variants, variants of the new A6, A7, and A8 models. There'll, there'll be a long in time. There'll be new there'll ones be, there'll coming. Be, there'll be new ones coming. So then. just the current models are going away for, for a brief period. Uh, of course, there's a lot of minor trim changes yeah. in Audi's lineup. So the A3, S3, and RS3 all have some minor changes. The A5 and S5 have a couple little tweaks here and there. Q5, SQ5 have some minor tweaks. Right. Q7 has some minor tweaks. And the TT has a few minor tweaks. We're not going to go super in-depth on what exactly they're changing because it's like trim or... Do you have like three hours option. to stay with yeah, us? We're, we're, yeah, we're trying to get through most of the important stuff here, so we're not going to ah, talk about Ah, but the Q3, that. there's no changes here, but... In Europe, there is a new model that has been unveiled. There it is. Look at that. It's blue. That's actually fun. pretty good looking. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, all right, moving on to Bentley. We're out of the A's and into the B's. And coming up in 2019, a new Bentley Continental GT. Now, this is the first comprehensive redesign since its debut in 2004. Yeah. It's an all-new chassis. It's lighter. 626 horsepower out of the <laughs> W12, which is the only option. Gee, what a shame. Bummer. Yeah. <laughs> just 626. <laughs> um, oh my there God. are some minor uh, changes. Didn't the Bentayga just come out? Yeah. Okay, minor yeah. changes. Yeah. New twin turbocharged V8 and plug-in hybrid models are coming. That's that's bit bigger than a minor change. Bigger plug-in hybrid in a Bentley. Yeah. Plug it. Okay. Yeah, we got to get those cafe numbers up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Mulsanne, the Bentley Mulsanne, which is like a really big, Long. luxurious, you don't buy one to drive it, you buy one to be driven in it. Uh, they're going to have a special edition called the WO edition for WO Bentley, mm -hmm. who started the company. Uh, yeah. 
so <laughs> this is this is really goofy special edition in my opinion. Okay. In the rear center console, they have a slice of the crankshaft from an eight liter Bentley, a model which W O Bentley personally designed and apparently was quite fond of. So they, right. that that's the eight liter Bentley, and then they've taken a small slice of that crankshaft and they put it and in. they put it in the center console. And there's only a hundred of them, so it's going to be wildly expensive. You know, if I was that rich, I'd, like, get the skull of my enemy to use to drink wine out of. Uh -huh. So, I mean, that's not so far-fetched. You know, it's it's a kind of a nice little yeah. personal touch for Bentley. Uh, and the reason they're only making 100 is because Bentley is turning 100 years old. Oh, I thought it was because the crankshaft is only so big and they can only get so many well, sections. Also that, maybe. <laughs> it has something to do with it. Uh, no deaths in the Bentley lineup. Uh, and we've pretty much covered all the minor changes, so we're right. going to keep moving on. But before we do that, actually, I want to check through and look for some shout-outs because uh, it's always nice to give people some shout-outs. Um, Double JJ says, finally, I'm here when they're live. Welcome. Double hey, JJ. JJ. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Jesse Simpson says, I hope that Ram brings back the Crosshair Grill eventually. What do you think about Maybe that? Maybe. One day. You know what? Going back to something that you guys were familiar with 10 years down the line, 15 mm -hmm. years down the line, isn't unheard of. A lot of people do it. I mean, look what Dodge did with the Dart. How popular was that? <laughs> Not. <laughs> it was Dart. A very yeah, swift uh, death. Maybe the Avenger will return. And yeah. I don't know, who knows? It, it, we'll have to see in time. I have a feeling, though, considering how many people have asked for the Crosshair Grill, that it will make a return at some point in time. Yeah. Um... Sise Asan, I don't know if I said that right. Sorry if I messed that up. The A3 is a cool entry level luxury luxury compact. Yeah, the newer one is much better than the one we tested a few years ago. I can tell you that. <laughs> Bunny Chuck says, "Fancy a slice of crankshaft with your wine? You better <laughs> because if you're getting that Bentley, you're gonna have one. You're gonna be paying some serious dough for that. Although it's kind of it's nice that you get a little piece of that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, John uh, Jonah Kramer asks, "How much is the Mos uh, It's it's not the, the Mosan. It's the uh, oh, it is the Mosan. The Mosan W O. Do we know the price on that, Zach?" No, okay, I was going to say... I don't I'm going to say a little bit more expensive right? than your average Chevy. I believe, yeah, the Mosin starts, like, well above $300,000, so... Well, it... No, keep going I think it's... A, there. Yeah, I bet, it, you're, I bet you're approaching half a million uh, at the end of the maybe. day. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Um, moving on, let's go to BMW. The Germans. Uh, and first up is actually something I'm really excited about. Brand spanking new 8 Series. Ooh, look at that. The iconic coupe returns... With the M850i xDrive being the first model that will be available. Uh, quick thing about this. So it's going to have a 4.4 liter V8, mm -hmm. 523 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque. It's going to be BMW's flagship Grand Tour Coupe. It's a big boy coupe, as I like to call it. Do you guys it. remember the one with the pop-up headlights from many, many years back? I like to go up, headlights oh, go down. I love oh, that man. car. So that nameplate is finally returning to yes. the BMW lineup in 2019. You know what else is returning? The BMW Z4. They're bringing back the two doors, Nathan. Well, this one's a Roadster. Uh, but this one, obviously, is if you've been paying any attention to the new Z4 or the Supra, you'd know that Toyota and BMW are jointly developing... Uh, a car together, basically. Yeah, this the, they share many of the same components, and I believe the same platform as well. And maybe an engine. Uh, maybe but they have not confirmed that, nor yeah. have they denied it. No, they're still Although I gotta there. say, I'm a little disappointed with the Z4. Why is uh, that? Final blush. I don't like the way the headlights are designed. What? To be honest with you, that looks great. You're gonna get over it. Anyway, yeah, it move on. So the X7. The X7 flagship crossover, BMW's first three-row crossover ever, which. Kind of makes them like super late to the three row game, honestly. <laughs> About a decade late, <laughs> uh, give or take. Just a little bit late. But look at it this way they really wanted to develop a vehicle that was still a BMW to drive, mm -hmm. yet had three rows. And that's what I've heard from a lot of people who have already experienced this vehicle one way or another. So that's the inside poop on that vehicle. I don't know how real that is. I guess we'll have to find out when we get one. I'm excited to see what it's like. Uh, more crossovers from BMW. The X5 has been completely overhauled for 2019. Doesn't look terribly different, but it's actually significantly larger overall, which is kind of interesting. And I think it looks nice. Yeah, it's just okay, yeah, the, it's the, the 3 Series. Uh, okay, now the last 3 Series, let's all admit, folks, was kind of meh, right? It was a little meh. Yeah, a little meh. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. they're supposed to be replacing it next year. Uh, what well, we've seen, spy, we, we have our own spy shots. Yes, we one do. Right there, actually. Uh, and we've seen a lot of spy footage and other spy shots of it. Uh, so, we know it's coming. We don't know everything we want to know about it yet. But stay tuned, because I'm sure in the near future, 
we'll be learning a lot. Now, of course, BMW has a bunch of different minor changes throughout their lineup. Yeah, uh, a lot the, of them. The i3 <laughs> has it. some minor changes. The i8 uh, Roadster model will have a strong electric motor. The M2 is being replaced by the M2 Competition, uh, which is something I would really love to drive at some point. The M5 is getting a 17 horsepower bump to 617 horsepower That's over all. 600 horsepower. <laughs> uh, I just drove one of those the other day. Yeah. Holy mother of God. Okay. Don't know if you needed that extra six, 17 horsepower, but they got it. Um, other minor changes to the M4, the X1, X3, X3, X6, 2 Series, 5 Series, and 7 Series. And what is dead? The current generation M3. Rest in peace. A new 3 Series is coming, so with that will be a new M3. Uh, but also the M6 convertible and the 6 Series convertible and coupe. Now those are probably presumably being replaced by the 8 Series. Right. Well, that, yeah, yeah, okay. That makes yeah, sense. I would think so. Can you, can you do the thing? Right. Oh, my gosh. I hit it too hard. Martin M499, welcome to the hood. Thank you very much, Martin. We appreciate your support as always. Thank you, Martin. Uh, before we move on, there's no changes to the X2 4 Series, 6 Series, 6 series M6 Grand Coupe, which is a big crossover. Or no, that's the big, yeah, that's that's the big, big sedan thingy. <laughs> it's, what is it? It's, it's massive. A, it's a four-door coupe, kind of. Yeah, they just, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. It's uh, and the 6 Series Grand Turismo. On to Bugatti. You talk about Bugatti. <laughs> okay. Uh, they have a new Devo, Weeby Devo. You can if you guys do you know who Devo? Would be good. But, uh, Five point uh, nine million dollar coach built car. It's got a unique body over the Chiron uh, mechanicals. So basically, they share components. It's and, coach built. Yep, and it's named after Albert Devo, a Bugatti racing driver. So the Chiron. Do I am I pronouncing that right? Chiron. 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 Well, because I've never. Chiron. Chiron. So Chiron. Chiron. The Chiron uh, gets minor changes at the $3.3 million sport model. Other minor tweaks and changes come along with it. We are basically talking about some of the more expensive and some of the fastest cars on the you, planet. What do you think of this Devo? Would you whip it good? Oh, that's the Chiron. There's the Devo. Look at that. This is the big change right here in the terms headlight. of, yeah, yeah. This, this whole new headlight that thing. Makes, that's the same, this line, the big C thingy is... It's a little different, though. They cut it oh, out a There's more. a French flag right here. <laughs> and the, is that, is it, they're blue walls. It has blue wall tires. If you can afford the car, Forget you're allowed to make walls. any color Let's wall you want. Let's get some blue walls. Uh, there you go. That's enough about Bugatti. Because it's time to talk Buick. about Buick. Buick. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, nothing goes together like right. Buicks and Bugatti. That's you know, like, you got to think about it, you know, in alphabetical order. You're thinking about Buick, and it's like, yeah, here we are, right next to Bugatti. Right next to Bugatti. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that was planned. Someone thought, hmm, which would they leave? Yeah, they, be next way to? down the line. Uh, coming up in 2019 is the Envision, uh, which will get a nine-speed automatic transmission available on the two-liter model. Yeah, that's a two-liter turbo model. Indeed it is. Uh, which gets a torque bump up to 295 pound-feet of torque. Which Man, they're starting to crank out some serious power <laughs> out of these. A two-liter turbo is a lot, of, it's a lot of torque. Well, considering that it's going into Buick as well, we're not talking about something that's going to have its tail lit on fire. Right. So that's a luxurious, comfortable vehicle. And along with that, you get a revised front end and rear fascia. Uh, there's some minor changes to the lacrosse and the Regal Sportback. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Logan Webb. Oh, shoot. Sorry, Logan. I forgot to write your name on the hood. Did I forget to write your name? Oh, I totally forgot to write your name. Was Logan one? Oh, Johnny Cash. Was Johnny the other Cash guy. was the was the puppy from some. Okay. That was sorry, Logan. I'll get to. No, sorry, Thank, you. Uh, Thank you again, by the way. Um, da, 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 Logan. Is it Casada yeah. or Cascada? Cascada. 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 Like the so no changes Washington. to the Cascada. Did you know the Cascades? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was making fun of you. The Enclave, the Encore, the Regal GS Tour X. No changes. So let's move on to Cadillac. And there's actually a lot of news with Cadillac. A lot of stuff going on with Yeah, including our involvement with an event that's coming up very soon. Hey, hey, hey. Speaking of the Cascades. Um, so first up, coming up in 2019, the Cadillac CT6 V-Sport, mm -hmm. which has a really enticing engine option. It's a 4.2-liter twin-turbo V8, which that's becoming a rare sentence to say. Yeah, 10-speed auto hooked up to that. Output? 550 horsepower Woo. and check this out 626 pound feet of torque. Those are numbers that make me happy, Nathan. <laughs> it's going to cost between 85 and 90 grand, but nowadays, in terms of power like that, and considering this is technically a sport and luxury vehicle, mm -hmm. that actually might be a good price. Yeah, you know, the cost is a number that doesn't make me quite as happy, but 
you know, I'm, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be glad if I can see one, let alone drive one. Uh, but the next vehicle is what you're talking mm -hmm. about. It's the XT4, which is their it. smaller crossover. There it is. Uh, 8.4 inches shorter than the XT5. It has a two-liter turbo, 237 horsepower, and. And we're going to be going out to Washington to test drive that vehicle next month. My hometown. Very soon, actually. Like, in well, a week Next or month two. is like a yeah. couple days from now. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Week, like two weeks or something like that. Uh, really close. There are some, some deaths in the Cadillac family. The ATS and ATS V sedan are going bye bye. Uh, no changes to the ATS and ATS V coupes, cool. though. Uh, the CTS and CTS V staying the same. Escalade's the same. XTS is the same. So is the XT5. The XT5 is the same. Uh, moving on to Cadillac's, uh, not parent company, but sibling company. Cousins. Cousins. They're cousins. cousins. I wouldn't say siblings. Chevrolet. Uh, a lot of news from Chevy yes. this year. Uh, and the biggest probably for our truck audience is, of course, the introduction of the 2019 Chevy Silverado, which is a huge redesign. All sorts of good stuff going on there. Andre, or sorry, Roman and Tommy just had the chance to drive it. Uh, in, what, Park City, Utah, I believe? I don't even know now at this point. They've been Wyoming. traveling there. It was uh, Wyoming. Oh, it was Wyoming. The gist of it is this. 450 pounds lighter than the outgoing model. Uh, there's the 5.3 liter V8, 6.2 liter V8, but what's really interesting are two new engine options. Mm -hmm. A 3 liter straight six Duramax diesel right. and a 2.7 liter turbo. Four cylinder. Four cylinder. First time that's really ever been done in a 1500 series pickup. Now keep in mind that this is a brand new truck from the ground up. This isn't something that's been rehashed. Pretty much every component on it has been revised. On top of that, every component that you see that has a hinge on it is aluminum. Which is ironic, considering the fact they were making fun of Ford for having a lot of aluminum. But truck beds. Uh, well, but yeah, the hood, the doors, and the, the tailgate, tailgate are all aluminum, plus some other bits here and there. Mm -hmm. A lot of use of alloys, stuff like that, in in the frame. Which makes it so much lighter. Uh, which makes it a lot, a lot lighter. Uh, we're getting one, actually, soon. I was yes. told by one of our friends in our press fleet here uh, last week that we're going to be getting a Trail Boss. That one. That, like that one, probably not that exact one. For two weeks, actually, October 1st to 15th, we're going to have a Trail Boss 2019 Colorado, which, of course, has the Z71 off-road package. I'm going to beat it like a redheaded stitch. Oh, God. I swear to God. Jesus. Did I, oh, it's, we're still alive. Yeah, we're still alive. I swear to God. Uh, but what else is new is something that you were just... Uh, yes, um, so the Camaro has recently received a facelift and a tummy tuck, I guess you could say, in the back. Um, <laughs> now, the facelift, a lot of people are on the fence whether or not they like it. Frankly, not so much, but the rear I love. But here's what's important. They have a one LE package, and I had an opportunity to drive it. Now, this is what it basically is. It's like a Frankenstein track car. What they did is they took the four-cylinder turbo, which is still the same as last year's, and they put on a whole bunch of different components to make it handle better on the track. So you have an entry-level price at 35, and as such, you have a discount track vehicle. I can't tell you how good it is in terms of on the track. Not yet. However, I can tell you this. Tonight, I believe at around 10 o'clock Mountain Time, mm -hmm. we will have a video and a written review up regarding driving impressions. Yeah, you just got to drive it in Seattle this past week. <laughs> it was, the place was covered in smoke, oh, too. God, it was, it was, it was so perfect smoky. time to drive. Um, and the important thing, like the one LE package has been on Camaros for a little bit, but the, the important thing is that they introduce it with the 2-liter engine. That is correct. Yeah. That is with the 2-liter, and we also drove it with the 6 speed manual transmission, too. Which is, uh, well, we'll find out later tonight. Uh, more more Chevy, there's tons of Chevys, dude. Okay. The Blazer. Eh, the Blazer. Iconic name, making its return, but not quite in the way that we had hoped. Uh, it's a crossover now. And it's nothing at all like the old K5 Blazers from 30 years ago. Uh, it's kind of going to be somewhere between the Equinox and the Traverse. But given what we know, what little we know about the upcoming Bronco, this is actually really surprising. See, they've missed an opportunity because the Bronco we know is going to be an off-road capable vehicle that has proper truck DNA. Unfortunately, the Blazer, and they knew this too. They knew this. When they decided to use that name, they figured, okay, let's put it on a crossover. Now, will this work? Will it sell? I think it'll sell. There's going to be some name recognition. People are going yeah. to like it as a decent crossover, you I know, guess. I actually think it doesn't look bad. Uh, it might be nice to drive. Who knows? But it's just really disappointing. It's misappropriating a name. It's really It's kind of like what Nissan did the, the, to the Pathfinder. You guys remember that? When the Pathfinder used to be kind of truckish and off-roadish, mm -hmm. and then it became a car. Yeah. 
the same type of issue. And I think many of you might agree with me on that. But hey, I'm going to reserve my final tidbit Judgment, of my opinion yeah, until yeah. we actually drive one. And it might be an excellent Colorado car. Who knows? Who knows? And it could still have some off-road goodness baked in there, despite not being body on frame, solid rear Chevy, action. rename it quickly. <laughs> All right, what about the Corvette, dude? Well, whew, finally, finally, we're going to see a mid-engine Corvette, a rear mid-engine. Rear engine or mid-engine? Is it, uh, is it rear? It is it's considered a mid-engine. Okay. Well, so GM hasn't confirmed hasn't confirmed the mid-engine corvette is coming in 2019 yeah, I, I thought they were like pretty much like yeah it, but it's, given how much is pretty much being as obvious as they can be without just actually just coming saying. out and they saying they haven't it. confirmed okay. it yet but we pretty much we're, we're in consensus now here, here here's the question though the regular Corvette, the current Corvette, is mm -hmm. one of the best handling cars I have ever driven. It's awesome. It is fantastic. It has so, a lap record around our track. Exactly. What makes this mid-engine one that much better? Now, obviously, you guys are going to say different weight distribution and everything else. Yes, I'm sure. But it's interesting to see them put so much effort into this car right now, at this particular time, mm -hmm. when they have such a great Corvette to begin with. And very little competition, because remember, the Viper, it's out of here. Gone. Yeah. Just a point of view. Well, we do know uh, that the 755 horsepower C7 ZR1 is here right now. It's the top model you can buy at the moment. We're not sure exactly, you know, what sort of engine the uh, the core the mid engine one might have. There's some speculation that the 4. Point, what is it? 4.2 liter uh, from that Cadillac AT6 V Sport mm -hmm. there, or CT6 V Sport. Oh, God, what is it? I need to get that right. CT6 V Sport. There's some speculation that the 4.2 liter twin turbo V8 will show up in that. Will show it's up in the mid engine polarization. Totally when we, speculation. When we were in New York, uh -huh. Cadillac CEO or yeah. ex CEO because he's since left the building, yeah. said without equivocation that that engine is going to remain a Cadillac exclusive engine. Okay. But Whether that's actually true, we don't sorry. know. Oh wait, wait, he's right. Ding. Uh, Trucker Dan, thanks Trucker hey, Dan, $5, Trucker Dan. welcome to the hood. I think the Blazer and the Mach 1 are basically the same thing, which is really disappointing. That's a good point, actually. So, uh, Ford... Oh, the Mach 1, yeah, yeah. That, I don't know. So, if we've, we've been told, or we were alluded to the Mach 1 coming back as, like, an electrified crossover. Yeah. And not a Mustang. See, that's why I'm not too sure. Yeah. I think it might be either a plug-in hybrid or possibly even an electric vehicle. Yeah. Uh, the way they've sort of been hinting. But I think they might be competing against each other to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where General Motors goes with it and where Ford goes with it. And also, remember that there it may be called the Maverick, but there's another crossover that Ford's coming out with that sort of sits between the, um, the Escape and the Bronco, and it's going to be based on a crossover platform, supposedly fairly off-road worthy. But we're going to have to save Ford for another show because yes, we, we, are. we have to hurry up a little bit. We're yes. kind of short on time. And by the way, dead, the Chevy Express fan. Remember that? I know you don't. Rest in peace. That was the <laughs> Nissan NV that was rebadged, okay? And, and guys, please, there are like nine on the road. Or they just didn't sell any of them because nobody recognized them. And if they did, they said, oh, it's a Nissan NV. I can get a Nissan for less. Right. There's a couple minor changes uh, in the lineup. Colorado has some minor trim changes. Mm -hmm. Malibu got a facelift. The RS trim, which, by the way, we have a video of and we have a review of with uh, driving, which is on TFL now. Uh, the Cruise got a facelift. The Spark has a mild refresh. And the Suburban has the RST package with the 6.2 liter V8. And there's a big announcement about that from TFL coming up very soon. So in the next so few days or maybe a few weeks, you'll hear about that. Good deal. Uh, no changes to the Bolt, Equinox, Impala, Silverado, Heavy Duty, Sonic, Tahoe, Traverse, or Trax. Moving on to Chrysler. No changes here. They're still just going to sell <laughs> two cars. <laughs> the 300 and the Pacifica. I actually just drove the Pacifica Hybrid yeah. S trim, which yeah. has black wheels and a black grille and some S badges. And yeah, but it's a plug-in it. hybrid. Yeah, but it was actually a really nice minivan. That, that's what I'm saying, though. I mean, that is like the proper use of plug-in hybrid. I think Thank it's you. the best. I, that's my exact thought. Roman and I came up with that idea first. It's the best way to use, like, uh, of all the vehicles you could slap a hybrid in. A minivan is perfect. Like all absolutely, you need out of that thing. Absolutely, absolutely perfect. It has what thirty-five range, or thirty-five miles of electric only. Or range. it might have thirty-five ranges. Thirty-five ranges of electric only miles. I mean, think about it. Taking uh, <laughs> the kids to school, picking up the groceries, stuff like that. I mean, it's You're literally a perfect more idea. Than 35 miles doing that, and it probably. actually is a properly driving minivan too. I mean, I, I really got to give them props. However, will that and the three hundred, which is ancient, will those vehicles be able to maintain the Chrysler name? No. 
I don't think so. You think Chrysler's going I, away? No, they need another vehicle or two is what oh, I think they yeah. need. I think they For need sure. to get a Fiat Punto and put a name on it. I think they need to get, uh, I don't know, some sort of SUV and put a different name on it and immediately put them out there as Chrysler products and do it today. Tesla sells more models in the U.S. right now than Chrysler does. Yeah, actually they do. Yeah. Um, but we should move on. There's no changes, by the way. Just, they just are <laughs> still, the same thing. They're still selling those. Dodge. Dodge. Okay. Dodge. Uh, the Challenger, some of you guys were commenting about this earlier. The Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye. So you gotta you gotta talk. You've driven this. You gotta talk about it. Fast, oh. amazingly fast. Okay, so a lot of you guys were probably wondering, well, what's the difference between the Red Eye, which has crazy amount of horsepower? Was it uh, 797 horsepower? Yep. Versus say 707 horsepower coming out of the Red Eye, or uh, right out of the regular Challenger Hellcat. What's so the difference? The regular. It's now 717. Now 717. The point is, is that you will not notice it. Nope, nope, not unless you are on a straightaway and you've come out of a corner and you put your foot down. So it's versus this, oh my God, versus ah! There's like total different things when the acceleration really kicks in when you're at speed. Sorry, could you just do that one more time? The, uh, and the, ah! Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, the thing is, is that that type of power kicks in so hard mm -hmm. and you can really feel it but you have to be at a certain point to feel it it's almost like a scramjet <laughs> those things only activate when they're going mach 3 until then they don't do anything it's sort of the same type of thing so that type of horsepower you only really feel it when you're pushing it already and then you go for that extra bit going into say a straightaway which i did and holy cow let me put it to you this way i used to have hair <laughs> the hellcat red eye it removes your hair. Yeah, now the regular Hellcat, yeah, it goes from 707 now, puts out 717 horsepower. That's mainly due to its new hood scoops, which look like cleavage. <laughs> and they suck in more air, basically. They bring it in and they get more power. They have the wide body kits, which are $6,000 more. Oh my and they also have the Scat Pack, the new one. There's actually two Scat Packs you can get. Yeah. One scat pack is for quarter mile times. I think that's called the 1324 or something, yeah, something like, that. like that. And then, of course, you got the other scat pack, which is more of a track package, which will work with the RT. And when you do that, you suddenly have a car that can outhandle just about any other Challenger, with the exception of horsepower. Right. So to clarify, the red eye. So Dodge killed the demon. Didn't kill the demon. They, they just they, they made all the ones they were going to make and threw them. Three thousand three hundred. Three hundred of those went to Canada. Three thousand yeah. are here in the U.S. You're lucky so Canadians. now the red eye is the most powerful Hellcat you can buy. Yeah. Sorry, demon owners. Sorry, demon owners. Basically, they took. Oh, speaking of Hellcats, Ral Hellcat. Any updates to the 2019 Hellcat Charger wide body red eye? Well, we're, that's what we're talking about right now, my friend. And the bottom line is, yes, I mean, the Red Eye is, is all new. The Red Eye has the engine that's out of the Demon. It doesn't have it's, the engine. It's the supercharger. Well, no, right? it's not just the supercharger. There or are components the, inside as well. As yeah. Well, yeah. So it's like a detuned Demon engine as opposed to an uptuned uh, okay. Hellcat engine. Right. So they are a little bit different, different superchargers, different amount of air take that they, they bring in. I mean, da 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 it goes on and on and on. Right. The bottom line is that you get a vehicle that puts out a lot more power. It's just power. that, you know what, fast, out of the box. It's yeah, absurd. I was able to make Roman cry wow. as a passenger. Really? Did yeah. you get it on camera? Oh, well, he didn't put it in the video, did Right, he? of course not. Um, okay, we should, we got to move on. We're almost done. Uh, minor changes to the Charger and the Journey and the Durango, which we currently have a Durango SRT in the yes, office Yes, we do. Right now. Yeah, we just, we're starting to do some videos with it. Stay tuned for those. Stay They're coming right those. around the corner. All right, start telling them about Ferrari. The Ferrari, the Portofino. The Bapu, yep, okay. That's starting to go on sale as a replacement for the California T. Um, it is the least expensive Ferrari, coming in at $214,500. Oh, that's bargain. actually, no, that's not so bad. That's I mean, not, this, you can get a Lexus that's for $214,000. I mean, yeah, but it's a Ferrari. Yeah, but it's, it's a for, just stop. Okay, anyway. Talk to the hand. All right. All right. So you can also get the 488 pista. Pista. It's like pista resistance. Pista. Okay. You know what pista means. It, oh, it means track. Pista. Uh, it's the track version. It's the more powerful version mm -hmm. with the 710 horsepower V8. Oof. And yeah, it means track. It says it right yeah, there. It, means it says it right there. Yeah, look at it. Open. Okay, but this is the best part. It has this like big old. Scoopy thing in the hood. I really love this design. Oh, right and here. that the, the vents. That's just that's a butt. And the stripe. Anytime Ferrari does like a track version, they give it a white stripe 
with a blue stripe on the inside, mm. like the uh, 458 Speciale. Really, Super Leggera also had it yeah. too, and some, yeah. some stuff like that. It's, it's really, Sorry, really the pretty. The stripes mean they're extra fast. Now, uh, okay, dead. The California tea, gone. Oh. La Ferrari, the Aperta. Uh, Aperta, Aperta, gone. What is the Aperta one? What's the aperto? What is the aperto, Zach? Here's a special one. Here's a special one, so it's no longer special because it's gone. It was a special La Ferrari. Our poor producer. Yeah, La Ferrari is not special enough, so we're gonna make a special. A special. special. Well, of course. Uh, um, no changes to the GTC4 Luso, mm -hmm. the 480 GTB slash Spider, or the A12 Super Fast. You know what Super Fast means? <laughs> Kind of quick. It's super fast. It's super fast. Uh, Speaking of super fast. Well, wait. No, I think you're. That's not. But uh, Fiat. It's Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to make them feel good. <laughs> Actually, though, you know what? Though, here's the new thing for the 500 and the 500C. It's the new 1.4 liter turbo that is now standard and puts out 135 horsepower for a little car like that that doesn't weigh anything. That is a quick engine. It's yeah. nearly as powerful. As the um, what was it the uh, not the Abarth but the uh, they had a turbo in between for a while. Oh, that, that was like a temporary thing. Well, they they had tons of special editions too. Yeah, but, um, I know what you mean. I can't remember the name. Now all new, well, very much new, not entirely new, is the FIFA uh, 500X. The 500X is their kind of crossoverish yeah, one, and it's, it's not a bad vehicle at all. We've driven a few nice. of them, and now they've finally updated it. It may get the 1.3 liter turbocharged engine or the 2.4, the Tiger Shark, which would be the base engine. So this is basically a, a Jeep. Uh, it's a Jeep Renegade, right? That's right. It's based on the same platform as the Jeep Renegade, and yeah. they share some of the same components as well. And there's a couple little styling updates. There's a picture of it right mm -hmm. there. The exterior, which I think is it's tasteful. Yeah. Considering the vehicles that they have that really need to go away, this is one of the better vehicles that's here to stay. Yeah. Okay, now the minor changes come to the Fiat 124 Spider and the Abarth. Yep, um, minor changes there, uh, nothing crazy. And yeah. no changes to the 500 Abarth, the 500C Abarth, 500E, or the 500L. Okay, and simply put, why does the 500L need to die? I don't know, you tell me. Kill it! God, can you... Guys, look, I love you. I, I love Italian stuff. The 500L doesn't even follow the regular construct of what makes a great Italian oh, car. God. Great Italian cars are like great Italian food. They look good. They smell good. They taste good. They make you feel good, but they're really bad for you. This just is bad for you. They're not known for their <laughs> longevity. They're not known for their styling. It looks like a suppository. It really looks like a surprise suppository. The, the, the biggest problem with that vehicle is it's taking your whole brand and lowering uh, it because it is the okay. least reliable car you built. The 500, super fun. Yeah. 124, super fun. Yeah. 500X, not a bad car. Not a bad car. 500L, get it! Gah, yikes. If it goes away, you may be able to actually get your name off the bottom of the list in terms of reliability. I'm sorry, but that's the, that's the truth. Uh, but that's the truth. Speaking of Fiat, really quickly, uh, Jim Serrazio says U.S. needs a version of the Panda. Heck yes. Hell I yeah. I drove the 100 horsepower a while back, uh -huh. and it was phenomenal. I also took a couple of the older, the first generation ones off-road yeah. when I was overseas. Loved them. Wish they could come here. You're never going to see them. Probably not. Never going to see the panda here. But you know what, Nathan? Mm. We're done. We made it. We're done. Thank we you, guys. First, We've got a lot third. more to cover. So, oh, God, obviously, yeah. tomorrow starts, I think, Ford. Uh, I think Ford is the first one, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, today we got through Fiat. Tomorrow we're starting with Ford and going to Maserati? Mercedes? What? Something like the M's. M, somewhere in the, the M's. M's. We'll figure it out. So, guys, if you enjoyed today, please come back tomorrow and join us again and get into the conversation. We're going to keep going. Uh, and for those of you who have been watching this after it published live, drop us a comment. Let, let us know what you think. Let us know what you're excited for. Uh, and thanks so much for tuning in. I think it's time, Nathan, to, uh, you know, it's... Uh, Hang those boys. We're going to play, we're gonna play ourselves out, if I can remember. Are you going to find the... Just where? hit any button. No, no, no. Hit you got to find the right song. Wait, wait, where'd it go? Seriously. Anyway. Welcome to Hitsville. Dubs, but... I don't think so this bad. is the same song, but it's No, good. it's not. No, no, this is the same one. Two fat white guys dancing on camera, guys. Come on, that's where someone... Don't get to see this every day. It... Cameraman, take...